Take off that silly hat, boy. State your name. Oh, Frank Worrell. What's your occupation? Um, a musician. A musician. <laughs> Are you working at this time? Um, yes, sir, at uh, Wave Waikiki. In, in Waikiki. When? Uh, Sunday, Monday nights. By, by yourself? Um, uh, no, sir. I'm. I have four comp four people that um, are were with me in what I, what we do. Um, Byron Lai, uh, Matthew Harlan Miller, Peter Bond, and Marty Curtin. They're and all just as responsible as I am. I'm sure. And what does this gang call itself? Um, hat makes the man. The hat makes the man. Now, what kind of a name is that? Um. Well, name. gosh, you're rooting, boss. Just, speak it's, up. It's just a name, sir. Watch just your tone with us, boy. Sorry, sir. Now, sources have told me that this hat makes the man has a tape out. Could you comment on this tape? Um, well, um, it's it's our demo tape that we have uh, been sending around to all our, all the record companies uh, to try and get a record contract in. Um, We've been selling it here locally. Dealing? Uh, well, How much do you charge for this illicit material? Six dollars, sir. Six dollars for rock and roll. Crime and a sin. My gosh. Now, what exactly are your plans for this band? Um, well, um, we're, um, Play. Speak up. <clears throat> we're we're gonna go to Los Angeles sir in June and and uh, and play some nightclubs over there, some Los rock Angeles. and roll nightclubs. The Den of Sin. And when exactly are you going over there? Um, June twenty third, sir, June for a week. June twenty third. What is the name of the facilities where you will be playing this heathen stuff? Well, um, well, we hope to play at. Um, Madame Wong's East and West and the Music Machine and um, FM Station and hopefully we can get into the, the palace. Disgusting. Dens of degradation, I'm sure. Now, what exactly made you get into this rock and roll business? Well, I don't know. It, it <clears throat> started when I was kind of small. First it started kind of in the kitchen. I, I had a wooden spoon and, and there were pots and pans in the cupboards and uh, I was putting away the dishes one day for my mom and I accidentally hit one of the pans and, and I kind of liked the sound, you know, and, but I didn't want to tell anybody so I, I used to wait till my parents were out of the house and then I'd, I'd hit one pan and then I'd set up three or four pans and I liked the way they sounded and, and, uh, and then a, a friend of mine had a drum set and he let me try that and then and then I, then I met Peter when I was about 12 or 13, and then we, we started a little band just kind of playing little songs, and, and uh, well, that's kind of how it started. What are some of your other musical influences since that point? Oh, Blenders. Um, oh, Orange Juice and The Smiths and... REM and don't smile. I'm sorry, sir. I'm Just sorry. For the facts, son. <laughs> yes. Um Wall of Voodoo and Oh uh, I don't know. I can't think right now. I'm kind of uh, nervous. Where were you on the afternoon of January twenty third, nineteen eighty five? At Oceanic Cablevision, sir. And what exactly were you doing there that fateful afternoon? Uh well I was, I was... Speak up, boy. I was doing a video for, for Rainbow Jam. Rainbow Jam. I've heard this name before. Now Wait how... Puke. How, <laughs> pray tell, has your life changed since you've been on this sickening television show called Rainbow Jam? Speak up, boy. <laughs> Well, don't. Yes, sir, boy, you know what your fate is going to be. You know it, boy. Yes, 
The cactus. No, not the cactus. I think the main direction is uh, just to progress as much as we can. You know, in all seriousness for the moment. You know, it's just to <laughs> play how we feel and, and to just become better and work at our stage presence and our music and work on more original stuff. Sunday and Monday night. 